Hi everybody, welcome to my series of videos depicting my book, author, and I am the author of Patrick Lorcan Woods, Madame Part 1, Bittersweet Goodbyes. We've done the preface, please check that out. We've done Chapter 1, Part 1. This is Chapter 1, Part 2. And it's Part 2 of the title of Chapter 1, which is called Memories of My Childhood. So I'm just going to backtrack a little, overlap, and then bring you forward again. I hope you enjoyed the continued story of memories of my childhood. Through these long days and lonely nights, I had now almost forgotten my past life. The only reminder was the faded photograph of my natural mother I had in my pocket when I first arrived at Linden Hall. Many times I sat and looked around my room, staring over at my brothers. I could not get rid of the feeling that something was not quite right. Yet we had everything to keep our minds occupied each day. Yes, we were aloof from the real world. We were rich, privileged in that we had all the material possessions that anyone could want. Nevertheless, I needed answers to the many questions that roamed around in my young head each day, not for my own peace of mind, but for those around me. During that first year at Linden Hall, my brothers and I were introduced to yet another brother called Luke. He was the last addition to our family, and Madame, throwing her hands together with glee, announced, My family is now complete. It was not until three years later, at the age of eight, that I realised we now lived happily together with Madame as a real family. My new brothers and I seemed to get on very well, being allowed the time to settle into our new life, developing our own personalities and becoming true to ourselves. During those early childhood summers, we spent our time enjoying picnics with Madame on the estate. There was the private lake and Fred would take us out on a small boat to fish. We enjoyed those privileges. There was even horse riding and the endless games of croquet played on the front lawns of Linden Hall. Meanwhile, all around the estate, children from the workhouse laboured hard in the fields, tilling the land and feeding the livestock of the gentry, who left their animals there. The children from the village of Glendora worked in different roles, from shining shoes on market day, to carrying seaweed from the shores by horse and cart to the local factory. Their day was as gruesome, gruesome one of chapped skin, blisters, skin lesions caused by the general hardship of the work entailed. In comparison, we spent our days learning and eating, days of general wastage really. I always felt angry when Madame instructed Fred to keep the children of the staff away from us. The skeleton thin frames for bodies huddling pathetically beneath their simple clothing always saddened me. Madame did her best to distract our attention away from their plight. However, I used to offer any spare food that I could find to them. Madame always became furious and lectured me about safety, especially when approaching these strangers. I remember on one occasion to annoy Madame, I quoted God, telling her that God always told us to love one another and our fellow being. Madame stared at me and through closed eyes proceeded to tut loudly, replying, I refuse to argue with you. Being so young, you will never have the patience to listen to me. However, Master Nathan, when you mature in years and you develop this skill, I shall do exactly that. We would normally finish our summers by exploring the countryside with Sheila, who taught us about God's little creatures, and then we would enjoy fishing lessons on the estate's lake with Fred. Sheila was the head cook and housekeeper. Madame, an accomplished painter, gave Luke private lessons as he took a particular liking to this. My brothers also loved to go climbing trees in the nearby mountainous area bordering the state. Alternatively, we could swim in the river which ran through the land under the supervision of Madame herself. Consequently, I have only fond memories up until the age of eight of those early summers in my adoptive home. Thereafter, things changed for me enormously, from the innocence of a vulnerable child to that of an intelligent young teenager. From the age of eight upwards, 
I notice when the summers turn to winter, a decadence to this darkest of seasons crept slowly inwards each year through the conversations that I had privately heard between Madame and her various guests at Linden Hall. There was repeated evidence of this darkness which started to engulf our home. Outside my bedroom window, I noticed how the once strong trees of summer were now becoming frail with age and their branches a little weaker, and how the leaves fell to the ground and disintegrated quickly before rejoining Mother Nature as God had intended. The summer of 1949 played most havoc with my head. I was nine years of age now. I will never forget it. I was playing croquet on the lawn with some of my brothers when I heard my name being called. Wandering through the lawn, I lost all sense of perspective, captivated my, by my caller's shouts. As I neared the rose garden, the voices disappeared. Madame unknown to me had also been shouting my name to no avail. Looking around eventually at my brothers, they just stood there laughing. The local priest, present at, at the time, had become puzzled by my actions. Fiddling with his cigar, he looked at me without battling an eyelid. Fred, on Madame's insistence, got a glass of iced water to refresh me. Instantly, Madame sat me down and asked me what happened. She said I was looking in the air and I was going round in circles, that I seemed lost. Knowing that if I cried, it would divert unwarranted attention, I began. Then on Madame's instructions, I was sent straight to, to my room to rest. This had been the first of many signs of what I later refer to as the voices of the wind. I felt it was a calling, as if someone was trying to draw my attention to something that at this point, I didn't know what it could be. Subtitle Memories of 1953, My Teenage Years. It wasn't until I became a strong, vibrant teenager at the age of 13 that I'd learned through those individual incidents to realise that I was not mad. In fact, the library at the Linden Hall house stood many books. One book called Paranoia Activities Around the World. It did help me a lot. I related to the book's findings about what individual people had encountered. Some heard voices, others just sensed things before they'd happened. It was called the psychic ability to sense and predict things before they actually happened. This was a gift bestowed on only certain individuals. Powers unknown to ordinary folk. Those powers enabled you to predict or see things in advance of them happening. Some people with this gift used it to, to come to the aid of people in need or sought after by others to predict things in their life. Some psychics even had the ability to speak to the dead. I felt in my own case that I was hearing the silent prayers of children who were praying for an end to their daily suffering forever. This story is about my own search to find the truth in relation to those silent prayers and about the visions I was getting. This story is all about how one very ordinary person managed to answer the prayers of those children. The perilous journey his life took before this happened and how he dealt with the nightmares and counters of all those that stood in his way to eventually conquer his own inner demons which had tortured his mind for so long. My name is Nathan. Mine is a story of courage and strength. How I took on those that represented the church and the judicial system of the time, winning both a personal moral victory for myself in situations where morals never existed. This everybody is my story. Chapter 2 will be my next video and that is called Madame. Thank you for listening. I hope you liked part two of chapter one. I'm looking forward to you all coming along on the journey of chapter two on part one of my trilogy. Again, I'm author Lord Patrick Logan Woods. We've got the books coming revamped, re-edited, coming along in June. I hope you'll be part of the buyer's market. That will make me a famous Irish author. A dream I've had since a little boy. Take care. <laughs> Take care for now.